Greetings, everyone. Well, it's closer look time again here on the Multimedia Chronicles. Today, we're going to be taking a look at my two-volume set here, comprising the complete series of Robin of Sherwood, which was a wonderful take on the classic Robin Hood story that ran from 1983 to 1985. So three series. Series one was six episodes. Series two was seven episodes. Series three was 13 episodes. Produced by Richard Carpenter for Samuel Goldwyn Entertainment, it is considered by many to be one of the definitive takes on the Robin Hood story. It's gritty, it's dark, it's very down-to-earth. It features a wonderful music score by Celtic band Clonad. It's also kind of notable in that it's one of the few British shows from the era that was shot entirely on film, making it a perfect candidate for high definition. So, Robin of Sherwood, let's take a closer look today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. So I first saw Robin of Sherwood, I guess, probably in 1986 or 87 when the local PBS station started showing it. Now, here in North America, it just went under the title of Robin Hood. And interesting to note, it does include both versions of the international title sequence on the Blu-ray set. So that's kind of a nice little bonus there. So in the original Robin Hood stories, there were a couple of different Robins. There was Robin of Loxley and Robert of Huntington. So one of the things that this series does is it attempts to reconcile those differences by giving a little bit more of a backstory to both of those Robins and kind of giving you the tale of where they came from and what, what their deal is and why there's two of them. So for series one and two, we have Michael Prade as Robin of Loxley. And then for Series 3, we have Jason Connery, yes, Sean Connery's son, as Robert of Huntington. Throughout both series, we also have the wonderful Nicholas Grace as the Sheriff of Nottingham, the perfect foil for both Robins. So I was immediately taken by this show when I first saw it on PBS. Uh, prior to that, I mean, my, my main familiarity with Robin Hood was the old Disney movie, you know, with all the characters as anthropomorphic animal people. So this was quite a revelation for me, seeing this gritty, down-to-earth take on Robin Hood, yet with a lot of supernatural and spiritual elements as well. So there's, like, elements of magic and sorcery and, you know, evil going on, in addition to all of the usual robbing from the rich, giving to the poor shenanigans. Also notable, this is the first version of Robin Hood to introduce a Saracen character into the Band of Merry Men. Yeah, a lot of people don't know this, but there was not a Saracen in the original Band of Merry Men in the original stories. That's from this series. They just thought it would make an interesting additional dynamic. So there's a character who starts off as uh, a nemesis, essentially, to Robin and, and the band. Uh, because he's under the control of an evil sorcerer. Well, they free him from the spell, and he decides to join up with them. But people were so taken with this character that it seems to have had a lasting impact on all subsequent versions of Robin Hood. So I remember seeing this in the mid to late 80s, and then a few years later, we had Kevin Costner's take on Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And... Look at that. There's a Saracen, played by Morgan Freeman, no less. <laughs> and then, skip ahead another few years, we had Robin Hood, the recent series on the BBC, which ran for three series. And, lo and behold, a Saracen in The Band of Merry Men. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So, if you're ever wondering where that came from, well... Robin of Sherwood. There you go. This was the first version to have a Saracen in the, uh, in the band. So... Kind of interesting that it had that lasting effect. But it's funny because I don't hear people talk about this show a lot, yet it seems to have had this 
effect on all subsequent versions of Robin Hood. And rightly so, because, I mean, quite frankly, I mean, this is easily my favorite take on Robin Hood that I've ever seen. I've since seen quite a few different versions over the years, and I always find myself coming back to this one. There's just something about this. There's just some kind of magic about this show that all the other versions haven't quite managed to recapture. So... Yeah. Anyway, let's head on down to the black table. There's quite a lot of goodies to go through in these sets here. So as most of you know, I always put Amazon links in the description for whatever I'm doing a video about. So I'll include Amazon links to these ones, but I'll also include Amazon links to the UK set. There's a nice complete series set, uh, once again, from Network. It's region free and includes all the same extras that are in this set here. So either way, you'll be able to get your hands on this one way or the other. And as always, thanks very much for using my Amazon links because I do get a little kickback for that, which does help to support the show. So thank you very much. Alrighty, well, let's head on down to the black table and we'll check out these lovely Blu-ray sets of Robin of Sherwood. Okay, here we go. So this is set one of Robin of Sherwood. All 13 episodes starring Michael Prade as Robin of Loxley. So this contains uh, Series 1 and 2. I think Series 1 was 6 episodes, Series 2 was 7, so that brought it up to 13 total. This is a very nice set from Acorn Media. Uh, sadly, long out of print. Um, I, I just thought, you know, this is a show that's always been special to me, and I've never really done any videos about it, so I thought, well, hey, let's, let's take a look at the Blu-ray sets. Um, there is a Region B Blu-ray set that you can still find out in the wild if you're able to play Region B Blu-rays. So there we go. Same artwork on the, uh, on the case there. But uh, let's crack it open. Oh, this is very nice. So we have this wonderful 40-page booklet with the set. So we'll take a look at that. It's just the same discard on each disc. Nothing uh, to write home about there. And then uh, some more information, disc by disc breakdowns underneath, which we'll, uh, we'll slide the uh, insert out and we'll take a look at that. So there you go. So we slide this out here. We have disc by disc breakdowns of what's on each disc there. Just kind of unglare it. So if you want to read that, just feel free to pause it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to read it all to you, but uh, so there we go. So it's basically three Blu-rays for the episodes, and then there's a bonus DVD of extras as well. So let's take a look at the booklet here. So we have all kinds of information about the making of the show, and quite dense with information actually this is this is almost like a criterion or arrow video level booklet here it's uh it's quite extensive some some very interesting reading there about the making of the show and there we go i guess technically speaking you could just kind of pause your way through this video if you want to read the whole damn book i'll just show you all the pages because uh as I say, this is long out of print. I don't know how easy it'll be for you to to get it. I will include Amazon links just in case you get lucky and, uh, you know, find a third-party seller who has them for a reasonable price. You never know. I'll also include Amazon links to the Region B version as well that Network Video put out. Um, so there was a... Uh, Acorn Media put, put this out on DVD a number of years ago. There was a complete series set that contained all 26 episodes. And then for the Blu-rays, they only put out the two series sets, I believe, like set one and two. I don't recall if they had a complete series set that had all of them, but uh, that's okay. I kind of like having them in the two sets because there's two distinct and separate eras of the show. Uh, there's the Robin of Loxley era, and then of course the Robert, Robin of Huntington um, era starring Jason Connery as Robin, which is quite good. So, yeah, this is this is just such a treat. Uh, I was such a fan of this show when it originally aired on PBS here in the 80s. Um, I thought it was just fantastic. 
and it made, uh, I mean, I'd always been a fan of Robin Hood to begin with, but this really cemented it for me. I just really loved this take on the lore. So um, let me just put everything back together here real quick, and then we'll go through the, uh, the contents of each disc. Okay, there we go. So you can just look at the lovely cover here, and I'll just uh, I'll just quickly go through the contents here for you. So disc one has the two-part uh, opening story, Robin Hood and the Sorcerer, in which he deals with an evil sorcerer and also uh, brings the band of merry men together for the first time. And then we have the Witch of Elsden. It also has as a bonus a behind-the-scenes documentary, The Electric Theater Show, upgraded and expanded from the original DVD release, which is pretty cool. Also on disc one with the two-part uh, pilot story, Robin Hood and the Sorcerer, we have a commentary by series creator Richard Carpenter and director Ian Sharp. On disc two, we have the Seven Poor Knights from Acre, Alan Adale, the King's Fool, which has commentary by series creator Richard Carpenter and director Ian Sharp. And we have parts one and two of The Swords of Wayland, with commentary by director Robert Young and producer Paul Knight. And then as a, a bonus, we have an extensive image gallery of production stills presented in HD for the first time. So a 15 minute long slideshow of high def production images and stills. So that's pretty cool. On disc three, we have The Prophecy, Lord of the Trees, The Children of Israel, The Enchantment, and The Greatest Enemy. And then as a bonus, we've got another image gallery of production stills presented in HD for the first time, uh, nine minutes worth this time, and music-only tracks for four of the episodes. Yes, yeah, so you get to hear all the wonderful music that Clonad did for the show in uh, all on its own as it appears in the show which is pretty cool and then finally on disc four which is the bonus dvd we have nothing's forgotten the making of robin of sherwood remastered which is two documentaries about the making of series one and two 102 minutes total so darn near two hours long and they've got new featurettes with director Robert Young and actors George Baker and Philip Jackson on episodes The Prophecy, The Swords of Wayland, and The Greatest Enemy, 23 minutes worth. We've got 16 minutes of outtakes. Textless and foreign credit sequences. Yeah, when it aired here, it was actually not called Robin of Sherwood. It was just called Robin Hood. So there's actually an alternate title sequence using the same font and everything that they filmed for the international markets. And um, that's what we got over here. So I only ever knew it as Robin Hood. So I kept hearing about this Robin of Sherwood show. I was like, that sounds a lot like the Robin Hood show I used to watch. Then I found out they were the same show, just marketed under different titles. So anyway, they have those alternate title sequences in the bonus section there, which is pretty cool. And then uh, if you have a DVD-ROM drive on your computer and uh, you can uh, check out PDF files, we've got PDF material including uh, public relations, Richard Carpenter's original story treatment, and several scripts from the show. So very, very cool. Quite a like, truly deluxe edition of this uh, wonderful series and an absolute treat for fans. There's just such a wealth of material to go through there. And that's only set one. This is only half the series. So the other half of the series was in set two featuring Jason Connery as Robin of Huntingdon. Yeah, so this is the other Robin Hood. Uh, now, if you're familiar with some of the original stories of Robin Hood, you'll know that there's a couple of different accounts of who exactly was Robin Hood. So this kind of takes both of those legends and consolidates them and makes them make sense, essentially. So uh, it's a wonderful fresh take on on the uh, the legend and the story that we all know so it's both familiar and different this series was also incredibly influential pretty much every version of Robin Hood that has followed this series has borrowed some elements from it Perhaps one of the big notable ones being the introduction of Nazir, a Saracen outlaw who joins the band. Um, yeah, he's not in the original stories. He's actually a, a creation solely of this. And interesting to note, just about every version of Robin Hood since this has featured 
a Saracen outlaw as part of the Band of Merry Men. Hmm, yes. Well, this was also notable in that it was one of the first ones to present sort of a, a grittier take on the legend rather than being the swashbuckling, bright, colorful, cheerful forest that we'd seen in so many previous interpretations. No, this was this is a, a dark, gritty, down-to-earth kind of interpretation that works in aspects of, of actual history uh, along with the legend, plus it adds in things like supernatural elements, like Hearn the Hunter, the spirit of the forest, and uh, having Robin Hood deal with sorcerers, and in one story, the devil himself, and, you know, things like that. So it's a really interesting mix of different mythologies and uh, elements of history, while at the same time uh, getting quite deep into the... Um, the legend itself and just kind of reinterpreting it sadly no booklet with set two they crammed it all into the first book but uh we do get some additional extras so let's uh take a look here and see what we got i guess maybe they weren't sure how well the blu-rays would sell so they just kind of piled everything onto uh, the first set so disc one we have parts one and two of hearn's son which picks up right where the previous season left off. We have commentary by Jason Connery and Mark Ryan on part one. And then on part two, we have commentary by Jason Connery, Mark Ryan, and joined by Clive Mantle. And then we have The Power of Albion. And then uh, for bonus features, we've got, uh, once again, a high-def image gallery, 23 minutes worth of uh, images on there, and music-only tracks for two episodes. So, so some more... Uh, opportunities for you to enjoy that wonderful score by Clonad. And then on disc two, we have The Inheritance, uh, which features commentary by Jason Connery, Mark Ryan, and Clive Mantle. The Sheriff of Nottingham, which features commentary by Jason Connery and Mark Ryan. The Cross of St. Cirrusus. Crom Cruach, featuring commentary by Jason Connery and Mark Ryan. Crom Cruach, I think, may have been the first episode I saw. And I was like, wow. And that's one where he fights an evil sorcerer. And uh, it was so dark and and sinister and different. It was so much different from any other version of Robin Hood I'd ever seen. I was immediately taken with it. And I was like, wow, I need to watch this show. And I watched it pretty faithfully from there on. Uh, and then continued when they cycled back around to the beginning of the series. And just loved it. And then we have The Betrayal. And then finally, uh, we have a music-only track for one of the episodes. It doesn't specify which episode, but I guess you can find that in the audio options. And then disc three, we have Adam Bell, uh, which features two commentary tracks. Actually, they really went all out with the commentary tracks on this one. Uh, so two commentary tracks, one by Jason Connery and Mark Ryan, and another by Nicholas Grace and writer Anthony Horowitz. Nicholas Grace, of course, played the Sheriff of Nottingham, an actor who I was familiar with from the original Channel 4 uh, TV movie of Max Hedrum, where he played the, uh, the head of Network 23. Um, then we have The Pretender, Rutterkin, and the two-part finale, The Time of the Wolf, featuring commentary by producer Esta Charkham and writer Sid Roberson. And finally, on disc four, once again, we have a bonus DVD. We have Nothing's Forgotten, The Making of Robin of Sherwood Remastered, which is a documentary about the making of series three. Yeah, basically, this is one series. They did So they did the six-episode first series, the seven-episode second series, and then a full 13 episodes for series three, so for a total of 26 episodes. Uh, and then we've got a documentary about Clonad scoring Robin of Sherwood, where they actually interview members of the band. Uh, we have producer Esta Charkham's photographic retrospective, which is four minutes long. Robin Hood 123 screen swordplay, eight minute featurette. 13 minutes of outtakes. Uh, it's Showtime promotional short, which is about five minutes long. Uh, credit sequences, TV AM location report, and additional. PDF material. It doesn't specify what the PDF material is this time, but I assume it's uh, much the same as it was last time, scripts and whatnot. And there we go. So let's just put all of this back together here. And there we go. There is set two and set 
one. Now, we're not quite finished because you may have noticed I've been gushing a little bit about the wonderful music that uh, the Irish band Clannad did for the show. Well, if you also love that music, then you might want to pick up this. Clannad Legend. This is actually the soundtrack album to Robin of Sherwood. Yeah, pretty cool. So, very nice CD edition. It has uh, 11 tracks, including a, uh, an alternate version of Together We. Uh, so, 10 tracks from the actual show, which is great. Let me crack it open here. So just fairly straightforward disc art there. I don't think there's anything underneath, no. But we do have a nice little insert booklet. There's Michael Prade as the man himself right there. Just be a second here, just gotta figure out how to get this out. It's always a little tricky getting the insert booklets out of a CD case. All right, so here we have this lovely booklet all about the making of the music for the show. And there they are, right there. Yeah, an absolutely fantastic score in this series. Always loved the music. It was one of the things that immediately struck me, was it It has this very different look to it. Uh, the entire series was shot on film as well, which was, which was quite uncommon for a British series at the time. But uh, the whole thing was shot on film. A lot of it was shot on location. Beautiful forest locations and, and old castles and such were used. And uh, it's just beautiful to look at. And uh, it's great to, uh, to have it on Blu-ray. Now, the whole thing was filmed on 16mm, uh, so it's not like super, super high definition. But it's definitely a lot better than the old PBS airings I used to watch back in the day. And if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've watched them. But uh, Series 1 was filmed on fairly grainy 16mm stock, so it's not quite as fine detail as uh, the later series. The later series were filmed on finer grain 16mm stock, so there does seem to be a bit of a jump in quality when you get to those episodes. But uh, man, what a great series. Uh, this is one I enjoy revisiting every few years and just sit down and, and watch all 26 episodes and enjoy the the saga again but uh, yeah if you're a fan of Robin Hood and uh, you're wondering where some of the sort of modern twists on the legend came from look no further than this wonderful series from the mid 80s and um, just enjoy it's it's one of the all-time greats and there you go oh and those of you wondering rest assured I will include a link to that clone ad CD as well trust me you're gonna want that after watching this show such an amazing score I absolutely love it Alrighty, well that about wraps it up for this time around. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, once again, highest possible recommendation. I absolutely love this show and I rewatch it fairly regularly. Um, I think I'm about due for another rewatch now, actually. Maybe I'll do that after I finish filming this episode. Yeah, alrighty. Well, thank you very much for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. Be sure to catch me on Twitch. I stream just about every day. And I will see you next time. Until then, sayonara.